From Southern California, this is The Circle of Insight, a show about everything in psychology. Hear the latest in news and views on psychology. Our motto is simple. Wherever there is psychology involved, we are there. And now, here's your host of The Circle of Insight, Carlos Vasquez. Welcome, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Today is part three of looking into ISIL and who they are, how they operate. We found out they work like a corporation. We found out some of their key players, Abu Bakr. We find out a little bit more about him and his history. Today we're asking the big question, is the administration doing the right thing in this war? Then the other big question is gonna be, what do we do to defeat ISIL? Today our guest is Dr. Amar Kizi. Thank you very much, Doctor, again for joining Pleasure. us. Thank you. Dr. Amar Kizi is Senior Director for Central Asia and Middle East at the GPRA Group. It's a commercial and risk assessment group. He was also the former director at the UN office in the Drug and Crime Afghanistan Unit. So let's get to the big question. And I know you're gonna preface it with some history, you say. Uh, what, is the administration uh, doing the right thing? Uh, well, you, you, we are in a situation where what we do or we don't do uh, might be limited by the situation in hand in Iraq. And we have to look at it, why we are at this situation. Uh, in 2003, uh, US and coalition forces, uh, they invaded Iraq and Saddam was overthrown. At the time, uh, many people thought that this uh, extension of U.S. forces in, to Iraq was not beneficial to the U.S. administration's fight against Al-Qaeda and Taliban in Afghanistan. Mm. So in Afghanistan, U.S. was extending itself extensively. And at that, at that time, I was also in Afghanistan. And mm. I could uh, also accept this notion that at the time when the U.S. started going to Iraq, it limited their activities in Afghanistan. Is that because it, of limited resources? Not only that, it opened a new front for extremists to operate against U.S. U.S. Yeah. had this front in Afghanistan and the mountains of Pakistan, where it was uh, getting, you know, hitting this Al-Qaeda and Taliban people. and. So with going to Iraq, a new front started. So uh, there is a new book out by President Bush, and he believes uh, that uh, the decision to go uh, to Iraq was the right one. And, but perhaps, I believe, if we consider that decision the right one, then leaving Iraq without reaching the objectives might be the wrong move. Hmm. might have been the wrong move. Uh, so what were the objectives of going into Iraq? If those objectives were reached, why we are in this mess now? And if those objectives were not reached, why the U.S. Army left? Uh, and there, uh, there are reasons why U.S. left. There are about 5,000 uh, mili U.S. military personnel died over there more than 3,000 U.S. contractors, uh, more than 30,000 uh, wounded, many of them disabled for life. Uh, the cost to, to U.S. economy of that uh, uh, operation in Iraq was put to more than three, till three trillion dollars. Wow. Uh, so we, we, you, you can see why U.S. had to leave. But the point is that why we left it in a situation where it, uh, uh, we were vulnerable to, in, uh, to operations like ISIL. And Vice President Biden, in a few weeks ago in Harvard, uh, he said that once U.S. and its uh, Iraqi counterparts uh, defeated ISIL, uh, at that time the ISI in Iraq, it was the U.S. allies, Turkey, Saudi Arabia, and Qatar, who kept the group alive in Syria. That's Actually, what Biden says. That's what Biden says. I mean, this fact is there. Yeah. So 
the point is why this happened, why we let this, why we let this happen, and this is the result that we see this group, because they were not destroyed completely for accommodating the objectives of the uh, U.S. allies in the region, this is the result of it. Let me go back to that a little bit. So do you think when Biden mentions that Turkey and Syria and Qatar kept ISI, ISI alive, now known as ISIL, um, do you think he knew that at that time? Of course. So they knew it all along. They knew it, but they just thought they were... But they underestimated the power of They ISIL. underestimated, and they gave in to the pressure uh, of Saudi Arabia and Turkey. So mm. uh, what we have now and what administration can do is limited. I don't think President Obama, after pulling out all these U.S. troops with all the costs, can send all the troops back again. So I think in both sides in Congress, uh, they believe that the uh, uh, U.S. should be more cautious in reacting to the situation. So perhaps these 3,000 advisors would be beneficial in uh, training the Iraqi army. But ISIL cannot be defeated if a viable and a strong army does not take offense against them. Uh, Iraqi army should not just leave itself on a defending mode. It should attack and destroy ISIL. And for that, they need a strong army. And for that, they need good training and good uh, equipment. So if U.S. Is, believes, uh, as I have read, uh, in the news that the administration believes that this number of advisors and the equipment that they are providing would result uh, in strong brigades attacking uh, ISIL, we have to wait and see what happens. Hmm. But I believe the air raids have stopped the, their uh, advance. They, they were advancing up to August, but when the uh, air uh, raids uh, started in August, uh, they could not capture new lands. They still have their lands, but they could not capture it. So with the Iraqi security forces uh, trained and equipped attacking ISIL, uh, we have to see some results. Welcome to Adelante. This is Adelante Recovery, and my name is Yvette Kuglin, and I'm part of the staff. Adelante Recovery Center has helped people in dual diagnosis for five years. We accept most PPO insurances and provide luxury accommodations and 24-hour support. To speak with an admissions counselor, call 1-888-242-4450. A lot of time we don't even know what's wrong with us and sometimes we need to get away to figure that out. So if you want to go for a little retreat out in Corona Del Mar, which is a confidential location, we're here to help. So we're only a phone call away. Thank you. Now to use a medical analogy, um, it sounds like you're comparing the air raids to like a medication. In other words, you have back pain, the medication will take away the pain, but it won't cure you. And the air raids are doing the same thing. They're going to stop ISIL from going forward, but it does not get rid of them. Correct. You need, hmm. uh, you need boots on the ground to you get rid of them. You are going to need the boots on the ground. So if the boots are going to be Iraqi security forces, be it. So we have to make sure that the Iraqi security forces are strong enough to push these people back. Are they up, do you think they are strong enough at the uh, moment? Well, they are not at the moment. They were, the, I mean, the army just collapsed. They gave in when uh, ISIL came in. So uh, the, now most of the army now, they are the Shias who are fighting uh, the, ah. the ISIL. So, but we need an all-inclusive army. If, if the Iraqi security forces, forces are going to attack ISIL and be successful, and uh, in keeping them away and destroying them, 
we need Sunnis and Kurds next to Shias Kurds. fighting them. That's actually uh, leads me to another question I wanted to ask. Um, I know we're going to get to your answer in a minute about how to defeat ISIL, but can we use those other groups? You mentioned earlier, I think in part two, that Al-Qaeda is not very fond of ISIL, doesn't like them. Is it possible to use some of these other groups that are less extreme than ISIL to come in to help us eliminate ISIL? Is there some kind of weird uh, strategy you can use on that, or is that too far-fetched? Uh, I'm not sure that these even smaller groups who are now siding with ISIL can be trusted uh, in uh, helping the coalition to get rid of ISIL. Uh, in 2006, the uh, U.S. paid actual money to the uh, Sunni tribal leaders to fight against ISI at that time and push them back. So they've been around for a while. They've been causing trouble for a long they, time. They have. And it has... Uh, paying to Sunni tribal leaders to use uh, Iraqi Sunni uh, tribesmen to fight against ISI was successful before. And these are the less extreme Sunnis then? Uh, they are not extremists, they are just, just Sunnis. Sunnis okay. when the, these ISIL people, they are extremists. And, uh, so I think that those tactics can be used again to make sure that the Sunni tribal leaders and the tribesmen are with the coalition, uh, are with the ISF, Islamic uh, Iraqi Security Forces, in fighting ISIL. Well, here's the million dollar question. How do we beat them? Uh, you said boots on the ground is possibly one way. Boots on the ground, it doesn't need to be the foreign boots. I mean, it, it, it could, uh, I mean, uh, IS, the Iraqi forces, the security forces, but they need training and equipment. So first we have to make sure that we built up a strong Iraqi army again and make sure that the failures that happened earlier this year when the army was disintegrated, it doesn't happen again. So the fight would be long. It might take some time. A couple of years, you think? It might take a couple of years to train a strong army and destroy them completely. There would be occasional advances as army getting ready and readier to fight them, uh, but it will take some time. So uh, we need actual support to ISF, the Isla uh, to Iraqi security forces. Uh, then, of course, uh, we, uh, we have to make sure that the mistakes, as I said in 2010, what Pre Vice President Biden said, it doesn't happen again. And this time the group is destroyed completely. Can you do that? Can you actually eliminate them completely? Of course. Okay, so there's no potential of it coming back again no. some other day. If Another form maybe, but not that ISIL. Uh, not even that. I mean, if they are pushed back, they lose all their cash resources and uh, arms, and mm. they are destroyed, and nobody goes and keeps them alive, as they did in 2010, they will be destroyed. But <laughs> we have to make sure, tactically, that this is done. And of course, we have to find a resolution to the issue of Syria. And uh, Syria's continuation of the current situation is not beneficial to the security of Iraq. And these groups will continue to operate in Syria and whenever they find it right to come back to Iraq. So we have to bring peace to Syria. And uh, we have to uh, be, uh, be all inclusive when we try to bring peace to Syria. We should not uh, limit ourselves to what would be the interests of Turkey, what would be the interests of Saudi Arabia, or what would be the interests of Iraq or other countries in the region. It would be what would be for the interests of peace, Syria. of resolving the issue of Syria. And for that, uh, I believe, a similar way that a strong Iraqi government was established a few months ago, the same way, if all parties are talking without any set goal, then I think a resolution will be there. Uh, what happened in Iraq 
it was that the previous government, al-Maliki, uh, he was seen as a person who was not taking or including Sunnis and Kurds enough in the government. They all agreed, all the people who had influence, all the countries who had influence in Iraq, they came together, the new prime minister came, al-Ibadi, uh, now there, are, there is an all-inclusive government there, and all parties are happy with it, and they all agreed that Maliki, the old uh, prime minister, he's also given a political position so people do not take retribution against him. But all this was done with the uh, goal of bringing peace and security to Iraq. If we have the same vision for Syria, it will happen. Interesting. Interesting. If we are going to continue mm. with the goal of removing Assad and putting somebody who Saudi Arabia or Turkey wants, is not going to be done. For three years, this has not been done. And for another three years, it's not going to be done. Now, yeah, there's too many lives being lost over there. Well, thank you so much, Dr. McKees. It was an amazing three-part series on ISIL. I, I've never learned so much on ISIL before. And it, it's a tragedy how many lives have been lost in all yes, this it mess. Is. Thank you again for joining us. Thank you for joining us as well. I hope you enjoyed this three-part series on ISIL and, and really getting an in-depth look at this group and finding out what they're doing. The good thing is it looks like we can shut this corporation down and make them go bankrupt, but we'll have to unify everybody to do it, and I know we can do that. We thank you again. We'll see you next time.